Good evening. I'm Mark Syme, the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our evening services for February the 11th, 2024. We will sing a few songs, observe the Lord's Supper, and I have a message for you that uh, hopefully will be enlightening and beneficial. Here at Northfield, we sing from the songbook, Songs of Faith and Praise. And so I will give you the number and the name of the song, just in case you don't have that book. And you can find it either through Google or through your own book. And if you feel <laughs> wanting to sing along, that would be great. The first song we're going to sing is number 449. 449. It's entitled Thy Word. Thy Word. 449. <clears throat> Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid, think I've lost my way, still you're there right beside me. Nothing will I fear as long as you are near. Please be near me to the end. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The next song we will sing is number 202, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, number 202. <clears throat> Joyful, joyful, we adore Thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before Thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround thee, earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea, chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou art Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. 
Mortals join the mighty chorus which the morning stars began. Father love is reigning o'er us, brother love binds man to man. Ever singing march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us onward in the triumph song of life. The song before the Lord's Supper will be number 334. 334. Tis midnight and on olive's brow. Tis midnight and on olive's brow. Number 334. <clears throat> Tis midnight and on olive's brow The star is dim that lately shone Tis midnight in the garden Now the suffering Savior prays alone Tis midnight and from all removed the Savior wrestles long with peers, in that disciple whom he loved, heeds not his master's grief and tears. <coughs> Tis midnight and from others' guilt. The man of sorrows weeps in blood. <coughs> Yet he that hath in anguish knelt <coughs> is not forsaken by his God. <clears throat> Tis midnight and from either plains is born the man of angels. No, unheard by mortals are the strains that sweetly soothe the Savior's woe. It is now time to observe the Lord's Supper. We are instructed to do this on the first day of the week, according to the 20th chapter of Acts and verse 7. Jesus instituted this supper on the night in which he was betrayed when he met with the twelve in the upper room. He explained to them what was going to happen. And then he set up a memorial, a memorial 2,000 years ago that has come all the way down through today. And we observe that exact same memorial, exactly the same way that Jesus did on the night in which he was betrayed. Exactly in the which uh, the way that the Apostle Paul explains it to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And so in that memorial, we partake of uh, some bread unleavened and fruit of the vine, grape juice. These two elements are the memorials which represent the body of our Lord that hung on the cross of Calvary. The fruit of the vine represents the innocent blood that he shed the blood that washes away our sins. So as we uh, gather, let's very, very seriously consider what Jesus did for us. Let's consider how important that is to us. Let's consider uh, 
that is something that even though it happened 2000 years ago, that we can feel it right now in our lives as we are involved in that memorial. Let's pray for the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful that Jesus was willing to give up his body, uh, that he allowed it to be wrapped with pain, with nails driven through his hands and through his feet. And as we partake of this bread, let's hearken back to Calvary and let's remember that what Jesus did and what he allowed to happen to his body was for each one of us. Let's remember that as we partake. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. We understand, dear God, that uh, as Jesus explained, and as the Apostle Paul explained, that the fruit of the vine is representative of the blood that Jesus shed for each one of us. That blood that washes away our sins, that blood which is foundational to our salvation uh, in him. And so as we partake of this fruit of the vine, Let's remember the blood that Jesus shed and understand that he shed it for each one of us. We pray this in his holy name. Amen. Having completed the Lord's Supper, also on the first day of the week, we are instructed to lay by in store and give back to the Lord that which we have been prospered. You know, we live in a country of prosperity. And as my words ring true to each one of you, um, let's try to understand that prosperity. Let's understand that Jesus died for his church and that church is the vehicle for bringing others to the Lord. The church is the vehicle for helping those within that church bond and even outside the church bond that are in need. And so as we give, let's understand that the monies that we give uh, are uh, uh, put into the church treasury so that it can do what its mission is here on earth to spread the word and to help the poor. Let's pray for the giving. Our Heavenly Father, we just pray that uh, we will give with an open heart, that we will give uh, with an open wallet, with an open pocketbook, that we will give uh, of our means, that we will give as we have prospered. We remember uh, in the Old Testament that uh, when sacrifice was made, it was always the best. And we give our best to you. We give and we sacrifice uh, the way they did and the way we are supposed to today. Help those that use these monies to use it wisely so that your word may go forth and that those in need may be helped. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. And the last song that we will sing before the lesson is number 450. 450. It's called Give Me the Bible. 450. Give Me the Bible. <clears throat> Give me the Bible, star of gladness gleaming, to cheer the wanderer, lone and tempest-tossed. No storm can hide that radiance peaceful beaming, since Jesus came to seek and save the lost. 
Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible when my heart is broken, when sin and grief have filled my soul with fear. Give me the precious words by Jesus spoken, Hold up faith's lamb to show my Savior near. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible, lamp of life immortal, hold up that splendor by the open grave. Show me the light from heaven shining portal, show me the glory gilding Jordan's wave. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining. Till night shall vanish in eternal day. That concludes our song service. I know that we were enriched by singing that the Lord was praised. And we just pray that that praise was such that um, the Lord's name was magnified uh, through our voices. If you were there this morning at our services, our morning services, you heard that the title of the lesson this evening would be Why I Believe in the Gospel of Christ. Hence, uh, two of the songs, one of them, Thy Word is a Lamp to My Feet, and Give Me the Bible, were two of the songs that we sang uh, kind of uh, to remind us what this lesson is all about. Um, among the things that I personally believe is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I say this, and I introduce this lesson to all of you, because I pray that all of you will also, um, will also believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so with that in mind, let's understand what the gospel is. That the gospel is the good news of Christ. It pertains to the good news of salvation. It involves the proclamation of God's grace offered through Jesus. And so as a disciple of Christ, and if we're Christians, we are indeed disciples of Christ. Uh, this evening, we will uh, take a look at why the gospel is so important and then maybe summarize some of the particulars about this gospel. First, let's look at the importance of the gospel of Jesus Christ. First, uh, we need to understand it is something that uh, Jesus wanted every person to hear. He wanted all people to hear the gospel. And so when he ascended into heaven in Mark chapter 16, uh, verses 15 and 16, he said, go preach the word to all the world. What was that? It was the gospel, the good news. And with that, uh, we make the proper assumption that the good news, the gospel was important to him. So if it's important to Jesus as his children, as children of God, it should be important to us. Some more about the importance of the gospel. It's the power. It is the power to salvation for everyone who believes. Paul described the gospel as God's power to salvation in Romans chapter 1 verse 16 and in 1 Corinthians 15 
verses 1 and 2. And in the gospel, we find that God's righteousness is revealed to us. That's what Romans chapter 1 verse 17 explains to us. Thus, the Apostle Paul said with all fullness of heart and fullness of mind in Romans 1.15 that he was not ashamed of the gospel for it was the power of God to salvation and he was ready to preach it anywhere. If Paul had these convictions about the good news of Jesus Christ, shouldn't we? And then there's, I guess, what we have to look at as the negative side. The negative side is condemnation for those that do not obey this good news. Peter raised this question of what would happen to those that do not obey in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17. Paul revealed the answer. The answer was vengeance and eternal destruction from God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7 through 10. And so, if the consequence of not believing the gospel is so grave, how can we not believe? So, because of what the gospel means to Jesus, it's so important for us and what it was what it meant to the apostles, uh, it must mean that same thing to each one of us. So with that, let's look at some of the particulars of the gospel. The first thing is, and if we do believe this gospel as, as the good news of Jesus Christ, it contains facts to believe. Yes, it contains facts to believe. We find that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 and 3. And Isaiah foretold Jesus in Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 to 6. Some particulars? In the gospel, it tells us that Jesus was raised from the dead. 1 Corinthians 15, 4 and Acts chapter 2, verse 32. It tells us that Christ is exalted as Lord and Savior. This is what Peter preached in Acts chapter 2, verses 33 to 36, and what the Apostle Paul explained in Ephesians 1, verses 20 to 23. And then even more important, um, it tells us that Christ is coming again. In Acts chapter 17, verses 30 to 31, in 1 Thessalonians 1, 7 to 9, we note, and again, there, this is very important to each of us, that destruction comes to those that do not obey the gospel. Therefore, it contains more than simply facts to believe. <sighs> There's so much more to the good news of the gospel. The good news gives us the steps by which we can get into Jesus Christ. It tells us in Mark 16, 16, in the Great Commission, that we must believe the gospel concerning Jesus those that believe will be saved. That's what he says. The gospel tells us that we must confess our faith in Jesus Christ. That is our confession. When someone comes to the Lord, we ask him or her to confess that Jesus Christ is indeed the Son of God. Why? Because the gospel explains that to us in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 to 10, and in Acts chapter 8, verse 37. And then there is repentance. 
then there is that act of letting God know that we're sorry for what we did and we don't want to do that again. That is in our good news also. In Luke 24, verses 46 to 47, it is exactly in Peter's first gospel sermon in Acts chapter 2, verses 37 and 38. And finally, Peter in that sermon in uh, Acts uh, chapter 2, verse 38, when the people cried out, when they knew that there was more to all of this, what must we do? And he told them they had to repent of their sins and be baptized, and they would receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's our new beginning, right? That's our new beginning. And our new beginning lets us know this is our new birthday. This is the day that we become children of the Lord. And now it's up to us to carry that out throughout our lives as Christians. We must remain faithful, even to the point of death. That's what John explained to us in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. That's what the Hebrew writer said to us in Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 to 14. For those who obey the gospel, Jesus becomes the author of eternal life for each of us. Lastly, the gospel offers promises to receive. What promises are they? Well, first, in that first gospel sermon, it says we will have remission of sins, Acts 2.38. Paul reiterates that in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. And there's that important gift of the Holy Spirit, that indwelling Holy Spirit that we receive, according to Acts chapter 2, verse 38. And then, most importantly for all of us, the good news explains to us the gift of everlasting life to be received at the end. We can all quote John 3.16, that God loved the world so much that he sent his only son. And why did he do that? So that we might live forever with our Lord. And so, this is why, indeed, the gospel is that great good news. And so, in summarizing this lesson, we have seen that the gospel of Christ is A, the good news Jesus wanted everyone to hear, the power of God to salvation to all who believe, and condemnation for those unwilling to obey it. We saw where the gospel contains facts, commands, and promises. Facts to believe the message and believe that the message contains the message of God's love and God's grace. It contains the commands to obey. And they're not difficult words uh, done to earn salvation but simple acts of faith by which we receive God's grace and receive his mercy. We get the promise to receive help with us to deal with the problems of sin in our life. And with that, we offer the invitation to you this evening. Do you believe in the gospel of Christ? Do you believe it enough to obey it to ensure the salvation of your soul? Do you believe it enough to tell others about why the gospel is so important? May all of us have the same attitude that the Apostle Paul had regarding the gospel. In Romans chapter 1, verse 16, he said, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, because it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first, and also to the Greek. If you need to come to Christ this evening, we offer that invitation to you. 
that you may walk in newness of life, having, as we already uh, uh, mentioned, uh, the commands to obey, the commands to have uh, faith in Jesus Christ, repent of our sins, confess Jesus, and be baptized. If that's your need this evening, please get in touch with us and we're at your beck and call to help you to obey the plan of salvation. If you need to confess your sins, do that privately on your own. Uh, do that to the Lord and let the Lord know that, that uh, you're sorry for what you have done. And we just pray that uh, um, he will uh, be taken into our hearts that we might come to understand him in our lives. Uh, if you need to come to Jesus or confess sins, now is the time. Let's pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for the good news of Jesus Christ found in the gospel. And that indeed is what it is. Help us to take it into our hearts. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, that we might uh, just uh, uh, take this holy word and, and take it uh, as what it actually is. It says to us, if we believe that we can become your children and that if we believe, we believe well enough that not only will we become your children, but we'll want to spread the good news to others. Be with us as Christians. Help us to just take this good news of God into our hearts so that it might be part of our fiber, part of, of what drives us in our Christian lives. Be with us this evening. Continue to be with us and love us and comfort us. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all. God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above.